traffic November 101, Delta Whiskey, pipe alarms taxiing from apron 22 to holding point Alpha for runway 23. <laughs> Robin Hood riding through the glen. Robin Hood, Robin Hood with his band of men. Feared by the bad, loved by the good. Robin Hood, Robin Hood, Robin Hood. He called the greatest archers to a tavern on the green. They vowed to help the people of the king. They handled all the trouble on the English country scene And still found plenty of time to sing Robin Hood, Robin Hood, riding through the glen Robin Hood, Robin Hood, with his band of men Feared by the bad, loved by the good Robin Hood, Robin Hood, Robin Hood Welcome back to another video. It's been a while, but then it's been a pretty exceptional year. We're about to blast off on a cold day in Cambridge into a 900 foot overcast on an IFR Airways trip to Doncaster. Cambridge no longer has air traffic control at weekends, so departing IFR into the system means giving London air traffic control a call ahead of startup and securing after departure instructions. The Airways flight plan that we filed sees us starting at Cambridge and climbing to a point called Iboto, which is the starting point for us for an airway November 601. Iboto is near Kettering on the ground. We follow November 601 in almost a straight line to Embor, just north of East Midlands, before starting our arrival into Doncaster. London's after departure instructions for us were very straightforward. After departure, we were to depart on track towards Iboto, according to our plan. We had to remain outside controlled airspace. We were given our London control frequency and asked to squawk 6345. Cambridge traffic November 101, Delta Whiskey, line up, take off runway 23. With no one else flying at Cambridge, as soon as I leave the ATZ, I put a call in for the benefit of the tapes and change over to London Control. Cambridge traffic November 101 Delta Whiskey, clear of the ATZ, we're going to London 130925, bye bye. 
Outstanding, good morning, November 101, Delta Whiskey, just airborne off Cambridge, climbing through 2,000 feet on track of Oto to remain outside control there, please. November 101, Delta Whiskey, support to Ident, it's a basic service outside control airspace. Hi, don't you have basic service, November 1, Delta Whiskey? Number one, Delta Whiskey, you clear joint control airspace on track for Boto and the climb flight level 110. This joint control airspace on track for Boto, climbing flight level 110, November 1, Delta Whiskey. So we're not in the airways system yet, but we've already been identified by our airways controller and given exactly what we expected. A climb on track to Eboto to flight level 110, which is the base of that particular airway. We're under a basic service, which means that whilst the air traffic controller can see us, he's not providing any separation between us and other traffic. We don't mind too much, the weather is so bad that it's unlikely that there are too many others up, but also we are equipped with TCAS, so we can see certainly transponding aircraft around us. No excuse not to keep a good lookout though. As the climb continues, I monitor my position not only on the aircraft's avionics but also on four flights on my iPad. You can see immediately that this is not the most direct of routes, so what the controller has to say next is quite welcome. And November 1, Delta Whiskey, if you haven't been outside for a little longer, you can route direct. Thanks very much, uh, just confirming direct to uh, destination or Delta Whiskey. One Delta Whiskey, I found direct to destination, there's still a basic service outside controlled airspace. One Delta Whiskey, thank you very much. So we have a change of routing, direct to Doncaster. I enter it into the panel, and automatically it updates on full flight. The autopilot turns the aircraft towards the right, direct to Doncaster, and we can see the same movement replicated in full flight on the iPad. Depending on how you look at it, this new routing is both a good and a bad thing. It's a good thing because obviously it's much more direct. It's a bad thing because this particular routing ensures that we never actually enter controlled airspace in the airways system. We're actually going to fly along towards the east of the actual airways cluster. So we've done all of this filing and flying and actually we're never going to be protected by controlled airspace, at least not until we descend into Doncaster. But it's a good experience and with very little traffic flying around in these Covid times, the actual advantage of being in controlled airspace is somewhat reduced anyway. Now we're in the cruise, on a short flight like this, there's always something to do. Like pick up the Doncaster Atis, for example. At this stage we're still some way away from Doncaster, but it's good to have this situational awareness. We know we're going to be landing on runway 02, we know the wind isn't too bad and we know that the cloud and visibility is absolutely fine. Air traffic control in the airways over England is divided between London controllers and Scottish controllers. Scotland starts surprisingly far south, as we're about to find out. Number one Delta Whiskey, contact Scottish, 134 decimal 430. 134 decimal 430, and then one Delta Whiskey, bye bye. Scottish, good morning, November 101 Delta Whiskey, flight level 110, direct to Doncaster. Number 101 Delta Whiskey, Scottish Control, Roger. November 1 Delta Whiskey, what service you require to see control this place? November 1 Delta Whiskey, uh, traffic service if you can offer it. Okay, traffic service. Traffic service, November 1 Delta Whiskey. Flight level 110, 11,000 feet, is a relatively high cruising altitude for a non-pressurised aircraft. 
at this kind of level we should always be thinking about oxygen. So what are the rules relating to oxygen use? Well, November 101 Delta Whiskey is an American registered aircraft and I fly on an FAA license so a starting point is part 91 part 91211 which I've reproduced above. This seems to tell us that because we're below 12,500 feet no oxygen is required. But in aviation there's always a catch and because we're flying in Europe we are required to adhere to EASA rules at least for the time being and those say that any time I spend more than half an hour above 10,000 feet I need supplemental oxygen. So the FAA is trumped by EASA on this occasion um, although as it turns out the duration of the flight above flight level 100 is only about 15 minutes on this leg so though I'm carrying oxygen I'm not actually using it. Of information. Tango and Another 5 or 10 minutes down the line we've updated the ATIS, it's now Tango, no significant changes and you can see here on this extract from ForeFlight that I've loaded the instrument approach plate, the ILS for 02, onto ForeFlight directly. This is a brilliant tool for self-briefing the approach. And November 1 Delta Whiskey, uh, there is a contact just near 12 o'clock, uh, straight ahead, range of 4 miles. It's a primary only contact, it may just be weather, but I thought I'd better point it out to you. About 3 miles ahead of you now. Okay, more Delta C, thank you, we're looking nothing seen. And Carolyn, former Romeo Scottish? Well, that's Carolyn, former Romeo. As you've got um, a bit of a delay, uh, do you want to hold higher at Rosen, uh, say flight level 180 or something like that? It would be great, uh, Carolyn, former Romeo, thank you. Carolyn, former Romeo, would you do some flight level 180 if you, if you just want to float down, that's no problem. Just slowing down to 200 knots and descent flight over 180. Thanks for the call, Taylor, like former Romeo. No problem, I'll keep you uh, advised. I've spoken to Manchester and they do think it will be 11 before they open at the earliest. That's what we have. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, November 1, Delta Whiskey, that traffic's now uh, disappeared again. What Delta Whiskey, Roger. November 1, Delta Whiskey, when ready, descend flight level 90. Send flight level 90, one Delta Whiskey. We're starting to get really close to Doncaster now, so this is an initial descent before we get handed over to the Doncaster controllers. Meanwhile on full flight, you can see superimposed on the instrument approach chart other traffic beamed onto the iPad directly from the aircraft's TCAS system. November 1 Delta Whiskey, my radar service now terminates. Contact Doncaster Approach. 126 decimal 225. Good day. Contact 126225. Thanks for service. Goodbye, one Delta Whiskey. Doncaster Approach, good morning, November 101 Delta Whiskey. Descending through flight level 101, flight level 90. And we have information Tango, C832. Number 101 Delta Whiskey, Doctor Radar, good morning, featuring ILS stroke from A02, you've got 3-4 miles from touchdown. Texas 3 ILS 02, 1 Delta Whiskey. Number 1 Delta Whiskey, turn left heading 320 degrees, descent central altitude 3000 feet, QNH 990, heads Pascal. Yes, head 320, and just confirm altitude again please. Altitude 3000 feet. 3, I fumbled that initial readback. It's an object lesson in making sure that you understand exactly what you've been asked to do and if necessary get it read back. You can see here on full flight that we're now being vectored a slight left turn onto the ILS. Now that the vectors have started we can activate the approach that we previously loaded into the aircraft's onboard Garmin system and as I do that you'll see that the representation changes on full flight too. Doctor Radar, good morning, Golf. My Golf, this is the address of the basic service, show it to please. Golf, 
Southwest India, Doncaster Radar, good morning. Squawk 6165, basic service, flash message. Uh, basic service, uh, unfortunately negative uh, transponder. Uh, golf, Mike Golf, Whiskey, there's obviously now 44, just listed from a private site outside the southwest corner of the zone. They're turning back to the same private site. We're currently two miles north of Maltby Town, uh, 800 feet on 990, hexapascal, so we'd like a well, God bless service. Uh, zone entry just into the southwest corner, please, Golf, uh, Whiskey, India. Golf, Whiskey, India, Roger. Cloud base is here at 500 feet. What type of clearance do you require? Uh, special VFR, then, please, Golf, uh, Whiskey, India. Uh, just aerial surveys from field, golf with you, yes. All right, so remain outside. Once the traffic's inbound, I'll get you in. Uh, copy that. We'll go golf with you, yes. Are you just south of what is now by two miles? Hey, uh, golf with you, yes. So in just two neat headings, this controller has managed to position us to establish onto the ILS-02. And as I turn onto that new heading, you can see the aeroplane responding on foreflight. Five hundred. Minimums, minimums.
Charlie, one dot whiskey. Make it left at Charlie one. Left on Charlie, one dot whiskey. Once on the ground, another handy feature of ForeFlight is that it pops up the taxi map in front of you once it detects the aircraft's slow down to taxiing speed. So complicated instructions that might get you either confused or lost immediately become clear. We're going to be vacating next left on Charlie. Handling at Doncaster was by the ever-friendly Consort Aviation. The price for me in December 2020 was landing fee £30, handling £25, all in £55. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel. There are over 500 of you already. If you want to receive notifications each time I produce a new video, click the little bell icon next to the subscribe button. I'll look forward to seeing you on another video soon. Robin Hood, Robin Hood, riding through the glen. Robin Hood, Robin Hood, with his band of men. Feared by the bad, loved by the good. Robin Hood, Robin Hood, Robin Hood. The greatest archers to a tavern on the green. They vowed to help the people of the king. They handled all the trouble on the English country scene and still found plenty of time to sing. Robin Hood, Robin Hood, riding through the glen. Robin Hood, Robin Hood, with his band of men. Feared by the bad, loved by the good. Robin Hood. Robin Hood, Robin Hood.